Let's explore how to make a modern chart of experimental data. And this modern chart is called the strip chart. So first thing I want to show you is typically in a spreadsheet, when you have two or more treatment levels and your x-axis is categorical, those are the different groups, and your y-axis is the measure, your response variable, Excel or a spreadsheet like Google Sheets will typically give you uh, the choice of a bar chart like this. So here's a bar chart where the height of the bar is the mean of the values for that group. All right. So and here's five different groups. This bar chart differs from something what a spreadsheet can do in that it contains the raw values from which the mean was computed. All right. Notice also that on this bar chart, we have a one standard deviation plot as the error bar or one standard deviation error bar on this plot. So what we want is to create a chart that looks more like this. And this is a more modern way of showing the data um, from an experiment. And some people call this a strip chart. Okay, what you see in the strip chart is here we have five different treatment levels. So these are the five different groups. Each, all of the data from each of the groups, all of the raw tumor volumes of each individual in each of the groups is shown by the colored dots. And then the means are shown by this horizontal bar within each group. And then the standard deviation of the data within each group is shown by this error bar here. And these error bars that are colored the same as the dots are pretty hard to see, right? So that's not a great plot right there. Okay, so we want to make something that looks something like this in a spreadsheet. So here's our data, and I've organized it in a somewhat odd way, but it's long formatted. That means that all of the counts for both treatment groups are in a single column, right? And we've got rows 2 through 15 are in the single species treatment, and then rows 16 through 29 are in the two species or mixed species treatment, right? And then we have two extra rows, and the extra rows is just the mean value of the single count, of the counts from all the vials. And uh, row 31 is the mean value of the counts from the mixed treatment, OK? And then we have some extra columns here. Um, essentially, we want column A on our x-axis, but we can't plot words on our x-axis, or we can with a bar chart, but we want to make effectively a scatter plot in which that x-axis is a continuous number or a continuous variable. So we're going to trick the spreadsheet um, into what we want to do. So we want to create a number representing either the single treatment or the mixed treatment. And that number, we're going to just use 1 for the single treatment and two for the mixed treatment. And ultimately what we're gonna get is we're gonna get the counts for the single treatment that are gonna be centered at the value one and counts for the mixed treatment that are centered at the value two. But you can't actually see the value one or two on this axis because I've hidden it, right? The second thing we wanna do is we wanna create what's called jittered values. So if we go back to this plot, if all of these values were um, at the same location on the x-axis, then it would be hard to, s they would be superimposed on each other where there are lots of values, especially something like this. They'd all be superimposed. It would be hard to see the individual points. So what a modern graph does or what a modern way of graphing data does is it, it jitters effectively the x value gives it a little bit of random variation along that x axis 
so that all the points aren't superimposed so that we can actually see the individual points. So we need to add that little bit of random value to the x values, right? So here's my jittered values, and you can see the jittered values for the single treatment are all near one, but not exactly equal to one. And that is, if we look at an individual value, I've used a function which takes its treatment code one and then adds just a small random number. And I've done that for each one. And you can see that all of these values are near one, but not quite one, so that when we plot them, they're not all right at x equals one. They're not superimposed and we can see the individual points. That's especially important for something like right here, where if all these were superimposed at x equals one, it would be hard to see how many points we have, all right? To see how much of the data is located right to the, at this value on the y-axis. Okay, so again, let's look at treatment two. All of these values are centered at two, but we have a little bit of random variation added to each one of those. Okay, so um, here's our treatment variables. Here's our treatment variables as a numeric code, and here's our treatment variables as a numeric code with a little bit of random number added to it. Okay. So we want to create a chart using these two columns here. And I'm gonna go all the way down and include the mean values, but notice that in the column that will be used as the Y variable, there's no value there. So let's insert a chart and there it is. And we can see we've got something that looks like this chart up there. Okay, uh, now we want to add the means. So we go to the series and we add a series. And I'm gonna first add the mean for the single and that's this column right here. And I just add that whole column. Almost all of, all of the values are empty except for this one, which is at x equals one. And there's the point right there. Now we need to add the series for the mixed mean. So it's going to be this column here, which is composed entirely of missing values, except for this one, which is at x equals 2. And there's that mean there. Now we just need to add error bars. And here's our standard error. I want to add standard errors since I like these better than standard deviations. And here's our standard error computed for the single, for the uh, s values in the single treatment. There's our standard error computed for the values in the mixed treatment. So we need to add those at a charge. Let's go to customize series, single, error bars. We want to make it constant, and that value is 3.4. Right? And we can see the error bar. Now we want to go to the mixed community, add an error bar, a constant value, and that value is 3.8. And we've got that error bar there. Now we basically have this chart, but we need to prettify it, okay? So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to um, give the counts a different color, let's say black. We wanna make them kind of in the background so we can actually make them a little bit gray Right, the individual counts are in the background, kind of emphasizing the, the series. We can even make those means a little bit bigger. So let's do that. Let's make this 10 points and this 10 points. Right, perfect. Um, now we're emphasizing the means and the error, but we've got the raw data there. Uh, 
All right, we want to push these two values a little bit closer together. So let's just horizontal axis, our minimum, let's say is 0 0.75 and our maximum is 2.25, right? Or we can make that 2.5 and 0.5, right? And we want to get rid of these grid lines here, which are meaningless, and we want to get rid of these x-axis values, which are me meaningless. So grid lines, horizontal axis, We're going to just get rid of them, not by actually get rid of them, but making them white, which makes them disappear. And we need to make these labels on the x-axis disappear using the same mechanism. So horizontal axis, there's the label, here's the color. We're going to use white, and those labels disappear. All right? Now we want to give the chart a nice title. And we could make this label for the x-axis disappear, or we could call it something better. So let's see. Here's our chart title. Um, effect of competition on paramecium density. And it's really interspecific competition, but there we go. Let's give that a black color. All right. Uh, our Y axis title, let's make that bigger. Right. And our X axis title, let's just get rid of it. All right. So. Here we have a strip chart with the group means and the standard deviations of each group. It is a pretty good version of a modern chart, but there are some clunky features. I, the fact that we have this group called counts in the legend here is very unsatisfying. Uh, it would be nice to actually have the word single here and the word mixed here to identify these two groups and then just get rid of the legend. So we could post process this in some other software, um, but this is as good as I can get to a modern chart format, which sometimes called a strip chart, which is plotting the data or showing the data. And that's, that's the important ad, uh, advance that, um, that has become very popular in biological sciences over the last five, six years.